Hello and welcome to the very first episode of Fort Worth Forward. I'm Michael Crane and I'm excited about bringing this new program to you. As you may know, I'm the current District 3 City Council member and when I was out campaigning for the job, I just realized there are so many great things happening here in Fort Worth and stories that need to be told. So out of the desire to share the Fort Worth story, Fort Worth Forward was born. Fort Worth really is an amazing place with incredible people, important businesses, and an unmatched creative class. I mean, we're the 12th biggest city in the United States now, approaching almost a million people. And I'm gonna steal a line here from our new Fort Worth Mayor, Maddie Parker. It is go time in Fort Worth. It really is. Today we have an incredible lineup of people including the Legacy Group from Lake Como, Chris Cobbler from the Fort Worth Report, and chef extraordinaire, Stefan Rochelle. So let's get started on this first episode. Thanks for joining us today on Fort Worth Forward. I'm excited to introduce our very first guest on this show, uh, the Legacy Group out of Como. It's leaders encouraging greatness among Como youth uh, are here with us, and, and I, I, they have done some great work. They're encouraging the youth that are out there in Como to do great things, and so I'd like to introduce you. Here you go. So uh, thanks for joining us, guys. Uh, thanks for coming on this uh, show, just to tell us a little bit about what y'all are doing. and. And you know, first I'd just like introduce yourself. Tell us a little bit about yourself and, and you know why you're a part of, of Legacy. So I'm William Young. Uh, I'm a graphic designer by degree. Born and raised in Como, Texas, of course. Uh, I'm in charge of marketing and promotions. Um, I just always wanted to do something for the community, and Legacy happened at the perfect time. That's great. That's great. Yeah. No. I'm Nolan Brooks, um, educator, been with Fort Worth ISD for almost 20 years. Um, I love Legacy. Legacy gave me a purpose in my community. Um, and being a part of my brothers that I meet uh, weekly, <laughs> it just gives me the opportunity to give back and enjoy everything that community, the community is made of. That's great. Yeah. Montague. Montague Cradell. Uh, I came back uh, home a couple years ago, after almost 24 years in the military. And so when Marcus put out the call, you know, for help with the cemetery, you know, I was, I was there and it kind of spontaneously grew. So, and then from there, we just kind of took it on ourselves to just make, make whatever happen happens, you know. So in the community, that's it. That's great, yeah. that's great, Michael. Michael Lockhart, uh, born and raised in Lake Como, um, have a degree in electronics engineering technology. Um, I joined Legacy because uh, it can give back to the community. I think a lot of us are in positions now where we can take, you know, right. take what we learn through life and stuff and give back to the kids and hopefully they can um, avoid some of the shortfalls of, you know, missteps that other kids, you know, have or whatever. So I really just joined it for the, you know, to give the kids something back, to give back to the community, help it out. Cause I'm in a you know a better position now, so that's great. That's yeah. great for for the people viewing that don't know where Como or really Lake Como, Texas, is located. You know, I, it's I, I, it's a it's a special part for me for District Three uh, because it's it's its own little just great little place um, that's right there mm -hmm. in the middle of uh, <laughs> lots of other things happening around it. I think so. Tell tell the viewers a little bit about from your own perspective. You know uh, what what Lake Como is and and, and a little bit about it. Um, I'll start. Uh, to me, it's just family. Uh, when you grow up in Como, you know just about everybody in the community. If they're on your street, if they're on the street behind you, you get to learn family. Um, when we were growing up, you might get a whooping from somebody <laughs> on the other street, but they took care of us, and yeah. that just became a family. And as you go through the, the school years, you grow up together. You, you watch guys grow up and leave, but they come back and just become part of that Como family, so that's what it means to me. Yeah, yeah. What makes Como unique is the fact that we're not spread out. Right. You know, we we're located in one spot, and being in that one spot, you have the the churches, you have the the schools that we all attend, and so we've known each other for all of our lives. Yeah. You know, you go to Como Elementary, and <laughs> from there you usually go to the same middle school, and from the same middle school you go to the same high school, and so. It's that connection that keeps us all connected because of the fact that the uniqueness of how Como is situated, being that it's in one spot. 
and it's not so spread out. There's no streets that break us up or have one part of the neighborhood on one side and the other side. It's all in that one location. Yeah, that's great. Anything to yeah, add your thoughts? Yeah, I would say it's, it's generational, mm -hmm. you know, because my mother grew up with his uncle. Uh, they went to high school together. Right. Our grandparents knew each other. Our great-grandparents knew each other. So it was it's more generational. Right. And you have that sense of community. Right. Whereas you, being young, you, you had no room for error, really. Right, right. So, right. You know, Everybody knew you probably, right? <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah. So I, I recall maybe throwing rocks in the street, and a lady come out and say, hey, quit throwing them rocks. Yeah. I say, okay, who does she know? You're right, exactly. You know, and, then, and then she'd tell you, I know your grandmother, I know your great-grandmother. <laughs> they live around the corner over here. And she started naming names. And so, yeah. and, you know, it's, it's like that. And that's, that's what he's talking about, the family of Como, right, right. the familyness of it. You brought up parents and grandparents and great-grandparents. Any, any good stories from that time? I mean, that they've told you over the years of just growing up in Como that would be interesting to share? I don't know if it would be a story, but I remember walking home from school, and if my grandmother wasn't able to pick us up, or if grandfather wasn't able to pick us up, you would have a parent that would walk all the way from the bottom of Como, halfway to watch all of the kids walk down Horn Street wow. to make sure that they got home. And our parents knew that, okay, it takes probably 15 minutes from you to get home. Right. So you should be home in 15 minutes. Don't stop by the store. <laughs> don't, you know, don't go to a friend's house. It takes you 15 minutes. And if you're not there in 15 minutes, she was on the phone like, have you seen? Right. <laughs> have you seen? So that's that family. That's that those, those, I, I just remember clearly, like, Big Mama was serious. Right. <laughs> Be home in 15 minutes, mm -hmm. and she's sitting in the window waiting for you to come across the field because you ran down the hill because I only got 10 more minutes to get to. <laughs> so. <laughs> yeah, and I, I, can, I can say some of that extends outside of Como. Just, I remember going to Leonard Middle School and Coach Woods, <laughs> you know, he used to coach at Como High School. He coached our parents. <laughs> he coached our parents. <laughs> and so I remember, I think I was in trouble about something. I was trying to explain something to him. And he said, you know, you got that line, look, just like your daddy. <laughs> <laughs> and, 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 and right there, I, I knew I had been had, so I had to come clean, so. <laughs> but just that, you know, is, is one of those things that, that connection of right. Como and the residents and the people that lived in Como throughout the years and still having that oversight of the young kids as they even leave outside of Como. Right. Yeah. Well, I think you're talking about a neighborhood, right? You're really talking about, and I think a lot of people want that these days, that neighborhood feel, that neighborhood, and they sort of figure out, and we have, we've got a lot of great neighborhoods in, in Fort Worth overall, but I think a lot of people sort of look for, you know, that neighborhood when they're trying to buy a house, et cetera. But y'all have a generational neighborhood that you, yeah. I mean, you probably know kids and grandkids now from, friends or so, right? The people, oh, it's, yeah. it's always yes. interesting to know um, that there's friends of mine who kids I will say, oh, you know, my, you may know my dad or you may know my mom. And the fact that these kids also have kids is like my <laughs> friends or grandparents now. <laughs> you know, so that's always a funny thing to me. But everybody is so connected. We're not so old enough to be grandparents right, yet, right? right? <laughs> no. But everybody is so connected um, right. because, like you say, the generational uh, connection that we have and our parents and grandparents and friends and families that have migrated here and been here and stayed here. My mom's still here. Yeah. You know, right. um, it's not going anywhere anytime soon. So you have that, you know, connection that will always keep come a tight knit community. Sure. Yeah. That's right. And even though most of us we probably don't live in Como right now, but we're there probably three, four times a week. Mm -hmm. Right. Just being in that environment because I mean it's just you just feel the love. Right. You know, wow. you can just feel the love when you come in and you wave at people. And yeah. You don't really know them, mm -hmm. but you wave at them right. anyway because you live in Como, so I got to wave. Right, <laughs> That's a requirement. Right. <laughs> well, I, I feel that same when I've gone through and have been you know, lucky to be invited to y'all's July 4th and other events and just talking to people and right. the waving piece and, right. and just, mm -hmm. you know, understanding that there is a, 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 a large fabric of life that goes on there right. where people know each other. So what about you, Michael? Any other sort of... I just like um, where a lot of them, they might not know your name, but they can look at you and they'll be like, 
you Ernest this Lockhart, son, aren't you? <laughs> 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 or, or you Louis Dean Harris's grandbaby or something. I'd be like, yes, ma'am, you know, and they, they recognize you, you know, from your parents or grandparents or something, you know. So it's just tight knit and everybody knows everybody. So That's great. That's great. Yeah. Well, you mentioned a, a little bit during this of um, uh, the, the cemetery cleanup and other things. So what are some of the projects y'all have undertaken as a, as a group? You know, I know you're, it's about empowering youth. It's about some healthy lifestyle, other things that you want to just, uh, I, I would say, overall empowering the community, right? Right. Um, to be a better place and, and build on that. And so what other projects have y'all worked on together since you formed? So we've uh, come together to create the uh, annual car wash fundraiser okay um that was centered around trying to help bring awareness as well as donations to the uh the local daycare center that's been in the neighborhood for how many years since 1950 uh, 1950 yeah, wow. it was wow. built in 1950. Um, and wow. that's the other thing like i said we've known each other all our lives because some of us started there you know yeah. as babies and uh, you know grew up <laughs> and went to kindergarten and, but at the, we started the car wash fundraiser um surpassed our, our goal like tremendously because the neighborhood came out and we purposely also decided to do the car wash uh, in an area that we wanted to change the narrative we wanted to bring some type of uh, awareness to that particular location which was the car wash but on Warren Street right, that car wash? because yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it's visible and yeah. we want to change the narrative of what it represent by bringing something good and positive right so we did the car wash and then in the uh, fall we did the closing the coat, sock, and coat drive. Okay. Um, we wanted to give back to those that are less fortunate because we know those temperatures were gonna drop and they dropped something yeah. serious. So the timing of it was actually pretty good, but yeah. we, we, had, uh, we, we had that now and we have um, you know, the car wash and so we're, we're all at this point trying to figure out to add a third and fourth you know, uh, community fundraiser because it's at a place where people are expecting us to do things that's going to definitely give back to the community, and that's what we're here for. Right, right. Yeah. That's great. Any other things that y'all sort of popped up? Well, I will say that um, I was very excited as it came together. There's always been some sort of <laughs> July 3rd party that sort of happened in, in Como for a long period of time, but y'all took the initiative this year to organize it and call it Como Fest right. and make it a family-friendly event. Uh, I had a great time out there uh, myself and talking to people and the music and y'all made me dance on the stage at <laughs> one point in time with the pastors. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, th I think you probably should have got second place. Yeah, 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 I was yeah. in the leg slide. Yeah, it's, it's, it's okay. It's okay. It's, uh, but it was it was a fun day. I think everybody had a good time. But just tell us how that idea came together of what what spurred y'all to say, wait, we we want to make this our major project. Uh, what what happened? What, how did that come together? Well, that was weird. It was brain child. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So and I hadn't been out and come on on the 3rd of July in years. Mm -hmm. And in 2019, I had no plans. I didn't go anywhere. So I decided I want to come to the neighborhood to see if the 3rd of July was anything close to what it used to be for us in the 90s. Like, right. it used to be a big deal. So right. I wanted to see if that was... And big deal, I want to be for our viewers too, big deal in a, a negative or a positive way. Positive. Okay. It would be right. uh, an opportunity for people to come and hang out because it would be a block party. Right, right, right. And um, because it, I say that because it did get into a few times where it became out of control and mm -hmm. et cetera, right? And it, right, it, it right. wasn't, I don't think, what y'all wanted in the neighborhood. Right. And it wasn't necessarily people from the neighborhood that were, it was people coming from other places. Exactly. So anyway, I, just, I put that out there as just mm -hmm. as a flavor for everybody to understand maybe two part of this that came together. So yeah. the 3rd of July was just as, as important as the 4th with the parade, you know, taking right. place the next day. However, in 2019, when I decided to go out and see what it was like, it was dead. It was really? nothing. Like the streets were empty. You may have a few kids riding bikes, but it was nothing going on. And so much so that the police that were stationed out there to, you know, make sure everything stayed in line, they were bored. <laughs> they were handing out water, they were having striking up conversations, just right. trying to do something to pass the time. And so in doing so, I felt like this was an opportunity that we could do something, organize something to bring people together on this day that everybody celebrates just, just as much as the 4th. Sure. Right. And that's kind of how, you know, the idea of Combo Fest came to be, yeah. because we wanted to just bring people together to, to celebrate on the 3rd and make it uh, an event that people would look forward to because we knew on the 4th everyone would be with their families, but 
Como itself is a family. Sure. So we wanted to do something that would put everybody together at the same time. So Yeah. So tell us about some of the events that were out there. <laughs> Kid Zone. Kid Zone, yeah. <laughs> um, we had the stage. We had the car show. We had vendors. We had food trucks. We had fun. Right. If you missed Como Fest, you missed the the big family of Como because that's, right. that's truly what it was. Right. Um, I was in charge of Kid Zone and working with kids for over over the span of years. Kids love to have a lot to do, and the idea was if I give them a lot to do, they'll sleep well when it's time <laughs> to go home. So they that's had true. plenty of that's activities. True. They had plenty of things to climb and run and jump and basketball and. And we had parents actually thank us afterwards, like appreciated because when they went home, I didn't have to tell anybody to go to bed. They went, so I was like, job well done. Even after so, all the snow cones and everything. Man, snow cones <laughs> and food vendors, so it was great. Kids Zone started out as four activities. Four yeah. activities. Turned right. into 40. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> That's the way it's Wear them out. Yeah. Wear them out, right. Well, and you had, you had some, uh, uh, you know, some praise Worship there. I think Leon yeah. Reed and in, in the in the, in the community group, choir. Community choir right. was there. What about what else was on the stage that day? Larry Lampkin. Larry, Larry Lampkin. Lampkin. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, he's from Como. Was actually born on Bonnell, there two blocks go. from where we uh, right. had the Como Fest. That's great. So, you gave out some awards too, right? As part of it. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. That's yeah. part of it. Yeah. Want to recognize the people in the community that have done things over the year, and also those who have supported us. Right. Uh, you know, everyone, including yourself, that got behind us when it came to making this happen. Yeah. Just, yeah. just our way of saying thank you. Well, it, I'll say it was fun, too. What, what was the corner it was on? So uh, Bonnell and Farron. Bonnell and Farron. And so I, I found it interesting being there of hearing some of the stories of maybe your parents that and maybe y'all had some fading memories of when that was a, a real right. a, 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 a commercial commerce corner. Right. right there. Right. Yeah, Everything was, that was there at the time. Now there's an empty field or a couple of empty yeah. fields. And, mm -hmm. uh, but it'd be nice to see that come back in some way. It was a movie form. theater. Right. Yeah. It was a movie theater. Yeah. 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 That's what we considered downtown Como. So yeah. it was yeah. a movie theater, furniture stores. I mean, pretty yeah. much yeah. Yeah. business. Yeah. Yeah. Como was self-sufficient. They didn't have to go anywhere else for anything. Everything was either on Bonnell or other little stores or stuff throughout the community. So yeah. yeah. You know, yeah. At, at one point it was it was sixty two businesses in Como. Yeah. 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 And and Bonnell was the like the economic hub of Como. Yeah. Yeah. So or there was a like a, was there a gas station there or a corner store and it was a, a restaurant, a, a gas grocery station store on, on Horn Street yeah. in Bonnell. And and next to the car works was yeah. what they call a Houghton yeah. store. It used to be Ragsdale. I don't know if it was something else before then, but it was Ragsdale. Yeah, full service yeah. gas station. Yeah. Well, and I know y'all are probably already in the planning stages for Coma Fest in 2022, or maybe you've taken a rest right now, but you will be shortly in the planning <laughs> stages. So, um, if if people want to get involved in that, is there a way that they could get involved and, and help in some way? Right. Yep. We give them the yeah. website. Yeah, yeah, they can go to um, legacylakecomo.org and Legacy fill, out the, yeah, fill out the yeah. fill out the join us. Um, Join us for them, or they can wait until we start announcing it. We'll send it out on social media and everything, sure. and give them ways to contact us and see how they want to help. And you had vendor booths and other things there. So yeah, vendor booths, yeah. food trucks, yeah. um, volunteers. Yeah, we had a car uh, show. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. It was, and it was scaled lot. back because of COVID. Mm -hmm. We weren't really right. sure how much we'll be able to do with COVID, so we scaled it back. So hopefully next year it'll be a lot bigger, and we can have more food truck vendors and more acts and everything. And so, yeah. Make it David. Yeah. yeah. And the beauty of Como Fest <laughs> was that we catered to every genre, every generation. Mm -hmm. um, my mom is 87, it'll be 88 in a couple of weeks, and she had a blast. Yeah. Um, I think I talked to her there. Was, yeah, uh, she yeah, had yeah. A, a blast. But, and that was the beauty of how we wanted to bring the generations together sure. because it was something for everyone. And in doing so, um, people are looking forward to seeing, you know, next year what we do. Sure. Because we want to keep that same vibe and energy to just know that you can come and have a good time. Like, we had classmates that, yeah, you know, wow. we had seen in years that don't even necessarily come to the reunions, but they came to Como Fest. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and yeah. everyone had a really great time. So, you know, that's that was our goal. That's awesome. I would, I would like to piggyback on yeah, what we were saying was that, I mean, you had even uh, different classes from Como High School, class of 69, 72, mm -hmm. I saw a uh, class of 62 out there, and they had their class reunion shirts on. So the, the third was really like a, a big family reunion mm -hmm. where everybody right. comes back. 
you know, before the 4th to enjoy the 4th of July. But I say this, we really wanted to change the narrative of what the 3rd of July had become, yeah. you know, in previous years, mm -hmm. you know, with, like you hinted on, some yeah. of that out of controlness or whatever. Right. And I believe we accomplished that, yeah. you know, with the Como Fest. I agree with you. I think you did too. And, and I know there was, we had a big meeting, you know, back last year with the police department about how they do it. And, and y'all said, guys, we got this. We can handle it. We want to work with you, sort of some traffic control. But I know that our police department worked with y'all and sort yeah. of scaled back yeah, the numbers were, that were there. And y'all y'all right. did. Y'all <laughs> handled, handled it and handled it well. And, and so. I would say this, uh, without their backing and the volunteers that we had, right. We wouldn't have been able to pull it off like that. Yeah, right. So I mean, a real thanks to the volunteers that came right. out for security, mm -hmm. for the kids zones, for right. different events. Yeah, I they mean, made they, it happen. They made it happen. The right. community is what made it happen. That's right. right. That's you right. know, that's right. Yeah. And I would just like to add, it took one man's vision, mm -hmm. and because Will had that vision, he shared it with the group, and it became all of our vision. Yeah. So with yeah, all of us being on the same page, not ever have an opportunity to do something like this before, not ever seeing it before, right. but just because one person had that vision, it becomes our vision, and now we can see what right. he sees. And once we were able to see that, anything was possible. That's right. why a kid zone, let's blow it up, because it, who said we can't? Right. right. We say we can, so right. let's make it happen. Who said we can't have a stage? Right. We say we can, let's make it happen. And that's why I love these guys, because we, we, we say we're gonna do it, Let's go make it happen. Right. So, I, I love that yeah. because what, what you've just, I mean, plainly said is one person can kind of make a difference. Yeah. And in, in they figure out what that is and how they then draw people in to do that, what right. that looks like. Um, and I think sometimes we forget that. We might get, you know, uh, a little in our own head or just our yeah, own life. Feelings. And you figure right. out, you, you, you forget, oh, wait, there's, uh, you know we're doing okay maybe i'm doing okay better than i am and there are other people that might need that help and having that that one vision to do it and so kind of leading into that and I'll, we'll wrap here but you know uh, there are lots of great things there's such an energy right now and y'all are a part of it going on in como yeah. there's such an energy of change of what's happening um i think i'm, I'm not going to sugarcoat it. there's lots of work that has to be done right right yeah. but there is this energy that's happening, and I think it's you know Fort Worth overall. But I can feel it when I'm down in Como and I'm talking to y'all and other pieces. So if if you you know five ten years from now, where where do you want to see Como, your home, <laughs> your you know your your home your little uh, where where do you want to see what 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 would you like to see change different better about Como Lake Como? I'll take it. <laughs> yeah. um, the hope and the opportunities that we probably didn't have when we were growing up the opportunities to grow, the partnerships to come in and give us the chance to build our community like it used to be when we were small, things that we didn't get a chance to see. We want to be able to see those businesses back in. We want to be able to see families playing in the street and having fun and coming back together without having to worry about, should I go outside or should I stay in? Just what we grew up with, what I grew up with, playing in the streets, we don't do that anymore, but we're trying to bring those things back to where the families can be the families of Como. I would love to see that again. That's great. Yeah, I, I would just like to see uh, more attention brought to, to civics, yeah. you know, more civic engagement. Yeah. And with the youth, you know, five or 10 years from now, many of them will be of voting age. That's right. So I know when I was in high school, coming out at 18, there was no no one to, to say, go push, go, you know, register to vote. Right. Except for my great grandmother, because she she voted on everything. Yeah. So, <laughs> but you know, just that and more uh, economic empowerment. I like to see more of the residents of Como owning businesses and having businesses in Como, and that way, and hiring people from within Como to build that economic structure that we need. Right. right. I right. think that that in ten, five, ten years to have maybe a, a grocery store or you know two or three different uh, local stores owned by the residents, right. you know, and that way you have some control over your commerce. Mm -hmm. That'd be great. Yeah. Anything? Yeah. Um, I just like to see the statistics like unemployment go down. Uh, have some financial literacy, have the education go up. I believe Como Elementary was once like a D or F graded school, but I think they've raised it up to a B now. Uh, I saw them on Ellen and it looked like they're doing great things, but um, 
the work don't stop with us. There's other organizations out there that could do more where we can all work together and make Como better than, you know, what it is now. So um, I believe everybody put in the work. I think we can make it, you know, better for everything, education, jobs, uh, unemployment, all that stuff. We can get, get all that taken care of. That's great. Yeah. Um, okay. Economic development. Yeah. Um, better housing. More housing. You know, I would like to see um, so affordable uh, programs that are developing around the youth to give them an, uh, incentives to want to be more than what they think they can. Sure. Uh, the opportunities to be able to offer scholarships to take them outside of Fort Worth because um, that was one of the things that with, with me, I never, Fort Worth people don't like to leave Fort Worth. <laughs> and so um, <laughs> the opportunity to be able to do that, you know, is definitely uh, something I know that could be life changing. So just having resources that can help the youth um, this, to see the things that are outside Fort Worth and then bring those back to help uh, build up the community. That's great. That's great. Well, I, I, I want to thank y'all for coming today. I want to thank y'all for being in all that you're doing in your community. Um, I know that y'all, your heart's in the right place and there's a lot of work we have to do. I'm committed to continue to help do that with y'all along the way. So y'all let me know how I can continue to help and, and uh, thanks for all you're doing. Well, thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks y'all. Uh, we'll be right back. I'm here now with Chris Cobbler, who's the CEO and publisher of the Fort Worth Report, a free on online newsletter that you can get. And Chris, I, I know you're fairly new. Thanks for joining us today. Sure. I appreciate Thanks it. Thanks for having yeah. me, Michael. Awesome. Yeah. I know you're fairly new to Fort Worth, and you have some history in the newspaper business and, and right. other things in, in Victoria. Right. And there's a stint at Harvard, it sounds like, from what I see. Right. Tell me a little bit about your background and, and how you got here to Fort Worth. Sure, sure. It's a, it's, it's a fun story. I've been in newspapers a long time, way back uh, since 1982 when I graduated from the University of Kansas and uh, have had a great newspaper career. I uh, did have the opportunity to um, go to Harvard and study for a year as a community journalist, study the future of, of news, the digital future of news, which is a key point, and study um, uh, how to promote a constructive community conversation about uh, changing demographics, all that really fits in here. From there, I went to uh, the Victoria Advocate where I was editor and publisher, but what I, what I learned at, uh, at Victoria and at Harvard was there big changes in local journalism and that's really what brought me here to Fort Worth uh, where 20, 26 or 7 years ago our daughter was born in Denton so um, we're actually uh, kind of back home a little back bit. Home. Yeah, yeah, back home. Yeah it's great to be back bit. home but it's changed a lot in that time boy has Fort Worth grown and changed uh, that, that's in that right. time so that's it's right. exciting to be here we're really enjoying it. So folks if you're not familiar with the Fort Worth Report it's an online a uh, uh, newsletter that you get every day. They've got reporters that are out there. And so, you know, Chris, I just want to talk to you about what's the mission of the Fort Worth Report? Sure, and, I, and I'll add, we certainly have the, the newsletter and also the website, Fort website Worth Report, yes, fortworthreport.org, so you can go directly there. But you can there. sign up for you it, sign right? Up, sign and up for the newsletter That's right. right at fortworthreport.org and encourage everybody to do that. But our mission is, is we boil it down to, to sort of three key points. We're, we're all about educating, uh, engaging, and empowering people through local journalism. We really look at local journalism, responsible local journalism, as a public service good. Yeah. So um, where people um, are involved and educated and empowered, they, we just have a healthier community. And that's really what uh, local journalism is all about. There's a lot of uh, growing research that talks about that, um, that and people, um, where there are, is robust local journalism, they're more civically engaged, and uh, government just works better. So that's what our mission is, to do those, those things. Yeah, you do talk about that, that people are more civically engaged if they, <laughs> with local journalism, maybe more than big, larger national publications, right? That here is talking about what affects you on a daily basis, maybe. Right, exactly. Yeah. Um, what uh, is really critical is if people don't feel connected to their community, uh, you know, the countries and the communities start breaking down, really. People are more polarized, they, they retreat to their whatever particular camps they're in, there's more confirmation bias, um, just things just don't work as well. But when they are involved, I mean, when you know your neighbor, mm -hmm. it's a lot harder to demonize them. And, and, and when, you, when you know all the hard work that they're doing, you know, we come together as a community and work on, on looking at solutions. So that's what our local journalism is really based on, is that solutions-oriented part of it. Because um, we're uh, locally owned and we're solutions-focused 
and we're free because again because it's a public good yeah I mean you, you talked a little bit about this too and some of the things I've seen you write that you know the business model of for-profit newspapers is, is is kind of dead so, yeah it's, it's broken I yeah, hate to broken. say it because yeah. it's, it's broken and pretty much on life support at this point and it's it's sad to see because I've had a little long career in that but um, and I think it is essential but there's no 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 turning back in right. that and that the, all the advertising you look at your local newspaper there's hardly any advertising in it mm -hmm. because all the advertising has gone to digital and mm -hmm. there Facebook and and Google and Amazon they all control the digital space and when you're when you're a for-profit newspaper chasing advertising mm -hmm. um, you you operate a lot differently you have to you, you have to first just cut staff to the bone and which is what's happened and then you have to just go after as many clicks as you can get and, and covering crime news and things that are sure to generate web traffic and that's that's not what we're about so we don't cover breaking news we think there's plenty of other that kind of um, shootings and stabbings mm -hmm. and those kind of stories out there we're covering uh, the meat and potatoes of of journalism you know local government education arts and culture the things that make Fort Worth Fort Worth and right. that's what our readership research showed that people want us to do that's yeah. what they want to see okay what are some top stories that you're kind of covering right now well, one, one story that we really uh, I thought was really interesting and important is about uh, the charter schools yeah. when I've gone out in the community uh, lots of community leaders and others have talked about how do we improve public education that's a, a backbone of, of, of where we are and anywhere and right. uh, charter schools rocket ship Academy is one of them that's uh, got a lot of promise prominence it's before the State Board of Education right now to get approved Our reporter uh, Jacob Sanchez mm -hmm. did a big in-depth deep dive into that uh, talk to people pros and cons there there are pros and cons of any issue but so that's the important part that we're uh, emphasizing that we're just fact-based, straight ahead, not biased in any way, just yeah. nonpartisan, yeah, right. um, not trying to take sides. Not we don't have a traditional opinion page you might see in a newspaper where we tell right. you what to think about the news. We're just providing the news to you, and and letting the readers make up their own mind. That's great. Yeah. That's great. Well, it, it begs the question too, because if you're not for profit. Then yeah. I know the funding has to come somewhere, right, right? Right. And I know that you've gotten funding from the Burnett Foundation, right. Sid Richardson Foundation, Amon Carter Foundation, and uh, it looks like Texas Health Resources right. has even funded a health Reporter, health reporter for you. Yeah. So yeah, tell tell us a little bit about that, about how the outreach, and then how you know uh, how else the funding comes to you. Right. Yeah. Being a nonprofit model doesn't mean you you don't need revenue. Not every right. everybody who works in nonprofit know you need revenue, and right. our revenue mix is is through foundation, state, local, national giving, through individual giving, um, through a, sort of a mix of corporate sponsorship and advertising and events, having events we plan to do now that we're all out of the pandemic, knock right. on wood, and, uh, and membership. I think, if you think about it a lot, people are familiar with the public broadcasting model of KERA. Mm -hmm. um, our, the biggest, the core of what we do is, is with the membership model, because if even just a small percentage of the 2.1 million people live in Tarrant County, want to voluntarily contribute to the Fort Worth report, we can grow to a very sizable, significant yeah. newsroom, sustainable newsroom, uh, because we don't have the, the legacy cost structure and debt of a print newspaper. Any revenue we generate just goes back to paying the local journalists here embedded in the community to do the work, and that's, yeah. that's very achievable. There are almost 300 of these local nonprofit news organizations across the country now. Wow. This is a big, growing trend because of what's happened in, in the, the for-profit newspaper world. That's great, and I think that's probably what you mean. I've heard you say it's community-owned. Right, right. Right. The community can play a role because they can be a member. Right. Or other pieces. Right. Yeah, we're having a community um, founding donor campaign right now. Again, go to FortWorthReport.org, and you can see all about that. Uh, but we are very responsible and responsive to the community because we are community-owned, and that's a, it's a huge piece of who we are and, and why people should. Um, um, check us out. That's great. That's uh, great. Well, I've said this too. I think that we have to do whatever we can to meet people where they are, where they're getting their news, mm -hmm. where that is. And again, it may be through this source, it may be online, it may be somewhere else, but I think we hit all the channels. Part of the reason for us doing this talk show too is just bring in interesting people, interesting things happening, right. so can we hopefully can reach more people in different aspects. So I appreciate what you're doing Thank and you. how you're getting out and, and just uh, you know, keeping some some politicians honest sometimes too, right? <laughs> well, it's important to do, and it, and it's yeah. again, it just it's the checks and balance of our system. It's the way it was meant 
to be. Right. To have, you know, Thomas Jefferson talked about it, about having a, how important an independent press was back in the founding of our country, and it's still true today. It's, we've gone through a lot of disruption with local news, which makes it even, even more important that we, yeah. we support local journalism now. That's great. Well, how can people find you? Where, where can they find you? Well, you go to, go to fortworthreport.org, go mm -hmm. to our website, and you'll see it'll pop right up. You can sign up for our newsletter, and every uh, weekday morning you'll get uh, this newsletter blast, and it's free. I mean, there's no obligation. You don't have to do anything. You don't have to contribute if you don't want to because, again, it's a, it's a public good. So we just encourage people to go to our website, sign up for our newsletter, be sure you let us through any spam filter that you might have, <laughs> and yeah. then, you're, then you're good to go. And then uh, you can contact us uh, via email, or we have a nice co-working space set up at Trinity Coffee House over on Weissenberger yeah. Street. So I encourage people to come by, have a cup of coffee, and talk about the news and what matters to you. That's great. Well, thank you. You've got a great team over there doing some great work, and we appreciate it. All right. Thank, thank you. you, Michael. Thank you. We'll be right back. Hey, welcome back. I'm here with a really special guy that's been a great friend to me, Stefan Rochelle, who is uh, executive, I'm going to get this right, executive chef, director of culinary and owner at Wishbone and Flint. He has won, I think, every award that you can win, top chef, best atmosphere, best restaurant, the list goes on and on and on. So I'm really actually uh, excited to have Stefan on here. He's been a friend of the community. So Stefan, welcome. Welcome. Thank you so much. How, How are you doing? doing? Extraordinary. I've had that that moniker you get, that's a new one. Extraordinary. So. <laughs> Chef extraordinaire. That's what I've, I've called you around as, yeah, as part we've, of Yeah, uh, we're very blessed to be part of the Fort Worth community. Yeah. Uh, Trident Restaurant Group, to my partners, Kyle Bryson and Wallace Owens. Uh, we've tried to put a cornerstone and be a g great steward of the community. That's kind of what our goal is here. So Yeah, you are. Blessed. You are in, in so many ways. T let's back up for a second. Yeah. Tell us your story. How did you end up here? And, and to be a chef, what, uh, what was the was that I'm, a lifelong dream to own a restaurant and be a chef? My dad was always in the business, and yeah. I always said I was like, I'll never do it. I'll never do it. He worked 90 yeah. hours a week, and so um, I worked front of the house through college and bartended and made a buttload of money. And was like, oh yeah. And then I got bit, and I loved cooking, and I just kind of fell into it. And it's like, I'll never do this. I'm gonna go do these other things. I worked IT sales. I worked manpower sales for about four years. I hated it. I hated I, being I, in yeah, a box. I can imagine. It's like the great thing about being in the restaurant business is it's it's never the same day right twice twice right, right. so it's uh, it's organic it changes on the on the daily and uh, we have a lot of fun with it and right. it is what you make it so yeah. you can either be stressed out and miserable all day or you can really own in the fun side of it and let that branch into your staff and create the culture so that's what we try to do was there a certain moment other than this what sounds like was not a very creative job <laughs> a certain moment where you said that's what I want to do that's where I want to be um, it's really when I started dating my wife. Uh, we did a lot of dinner parties, yeah. and everybody's like, "Oh, I'm only coming if Stefan's cooking." Yeah, and then that's kind of where it stuck. And then she she really kind of empowered that that passion. It was like, "You should really look into doing this as a career because you're really good at it." She she has been like your biggest. Cheerleader she is my biggest cheerleader. Hundred percent. Talk I'm, about her a little bit. Let's talk about. Yeah, it. she's a Very she's a good God fearing woman, and she keeps me in check. That's it's right. Like, it's like I mean, your wife's the same way. It's like if you don't have a strong willed woman behind you, I mean. I mean, they push you. That's right. And it, I'm very blessed to have that. So yeah, no, she's, she's awesome. great. And two she's kids. We two talked kids. about the two kids. Four and two. Brindley Grace and uh, Liam James. Uh, we kind of affectionately call Brindley the hospitality director of Trident. Like there you, you go. You catch her at the restaurant. She's touching tables and saying hi. And we talked about this. I mean, your kids are young too. I was like, <laughs> was the other day. I was like, stranger danger, right? Right, right, right. And she's like. Oh, his name is Michael. He's not a stranger anymore. <laughs> and I was like, that's not how it works. <laughs> Just because you got his name doesn't make you a stranger. It's like, she cracks me up, but she's also like my biggest critic. Hey, really? It's really? like, we talk about embarrassing stories. It's like, I, I create these dishes at home, and I'm like, all right, I'm going to put this on the menu. And she's like, it's not very good. <laughs> at four, she's yeah, telling at you this. Four, at four, yeah. You're yeah, just like, you're yeah. like, oh, I just want to go in the room. Can you imagine when she hits her teenage years? What she's oh, I can't wait. Let me tell you, <laughs> with the attitude and that, it'd be awesome. Um, I mean, Liam James. I mean, that kid is—he's a hurricane. Yeah. It's like she is so like prim and proper, and she sits and she crosses her legs. Yeah. She'll talk to you like this, and he's just like destroying everything <laughs> in his path. Um, I mean, the pediatrician said he's gonna be like six, seven, like two thirty. I'm like, oh great. So I need to buy a grocery store. Right. That's that, right. That's right. The Maybe that's why you're in a restaurant. Apparently, yes. yeah. I mean, this kid ate like six eggs the other day. He's two. <laughs> I was like. <laughs> Like, were well, you like that? No. Yeah, yeah. Like, I'm like, I don't even eat breakfast. I hate yeah, breakfast. Right, it's like right. this kid just in his path. He's like, 
Like the kids have a snack drawer and it's like empty constantly. I'm constantly f putting stuff in the snack drawer. That's great. That's great. It's great. He's, he, the kids are awesome. I love them. It's, uh, it's kind of made me take a step back and realize there has to be balance right. in life. Because I'm a workaholic. I love to work. I love to be in the business. I love the, the purpose of it. But my kids and my wife make me take a minute and go, okay, I need to slow down and realize that this is where I need to be because I used to have a lot of resentment to my dad because he worked all the time, but I understood why. Mm -hmm. And I, I'm trying to figure out how do I keep that mentality and keep it together where I'm home and I'm present and I'm not constantly at work. Right. And so right. It's, it's awesome. It's a, it's a good problem to have to figure out. That's right. Yeah, I think we all have to figure out that balance, right? Yeah. That we could work and all I think day long. 100%. But, but is that where we want to be at the end of our life, right? That we've right. done that. And the great thing about Fort Worth is there's so many things that are family friendly mm -hmm. that we can do together that we can still have adult time mm -hmm. with our friends, but have the kids too. Right. Um, I mean, anywhere from like Friday on the Green, the Museum District, Cultural District, all that stuff, it's like, it's really cool and built for everyone to be involved. Right. And I, I, I love Fort Worth, it's great. That's I, awesome. I've worked awesome. other cities and I always come back home. That's great. Do you have a certain philosophy for your cooking? Like what you're looking at, what you're trying to create as part of that? Um, we call it local worldly. So the Wishbone and Flint was kind of based on this. This is kind of like the baby, it's the dream. Uh, global cuisine with Texas ingredients. Right. Um, really trying to take food from everywhere and we take inspiration from everywhere. It's like, food's like music. You're never going to create something brand new. That's right. It's always been done before. You're just putting your own spin on it. Um, and chefs affectionately call it inspired. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it's really taking all these flavors and, and techniques and all these things and really just showcasing what comes from our great state and our coastal waters. Um, I mean, we have. S I mean, you have four seasons in the same state at the same time. It's true. Yeah. And the plethora that comes off the Gold Coast. Um, the Gulf Coast, it's just like, I mean, you can get tuna, swordfish, all these deep sea fish, and then you get the coastal waters. You get snapper and speckled trout and redfish and all the crustaceans and oysters and bivalves. It's just, it's such a plethora of items that are so good. Yeah. And there's only about a I month of breakfast and you're making me very <laughs> hungry. Very it's hungry. crazy. <laughs> um, I mean, at Wishbone, we really do focus on the Texas ingredients. There are a couple proteins that come from outside the state. Um, but that's just more, I want this dish on here and the seal. I mean, obviously, if you could get scallops from Texas, you don't want scallops from Texas. <laughs> <laughs> Things like that. So you we, just we tanked the, You've just tanked the scallop industry in Texas. Yeah, exactly, by right. Theory. Sorry. Um, we have a lot of fun with it. It has to be playful. There needs to be yeah. some sort of resonance and story to food. Right. That's great. That's great. So I want to talk about a, a, a really dark time mm -hmm. for you. Yes. Really for Fort Worth, because this is called Fort Worth Ford, right? Yeah. But you left us for a period of time and I went did. to Houston. I so. thought I was better than I was. <laughs> Let me tell you right now. Um, talk about a humbling moment, um, and God keeps you in check. It's uh, I thought I was too big for my britches is what I was. So I thought I was going to go change the world in Houston, um, which is probably, I put it up there with Chicago and San Francisco and the Northwest as some of the best culinary scene in the country. Sure. Um, the diversity, the size of the city, you can get every single aspect of food there. And I went down thinking I was going to be a little fish in a big pond and change the world. And in reality, we went down and we won every award we planned to win. Mm -hmm. But my clientele hated me because I didn't have the vision to see what my clientele wanted. Interesting. I was cooking for me. I wasn't cooking for them. Interesting. It was a very selfish movement. Um, and it was a little like a hum piece of humble pie. Put me in check. and. Um, my wife was pregnant with Brindley at the time when we moved to Houston. Um, it was, it was a hard, hard 10 months. Yeah. And, uh, it gives, really speaks to the people and you know, really the people of Fort Worth that open arms and welcome me back. Welcome and I was back. like, Hey, you need to come home. Did you, was there a different perspective when you left and came oh, back? Oh, hundred, hundred percent. So like. All right, take like a, a half roasted chicken dish, for example, right? So I was in Houston, I was doing it with this like roasted beet puree and orzo and all these special stuff. And it was like, I sold like 10 of them a week. And when I came home, I was like, I can't put, people aren't gonna eat beets, like they're just not going to. Right. Maybe in a salad or whatnot until they're ready to eat. So it's like, 
I put a wild mushroom Again, risotto. You just, yeah, I think you've just sank the beet industry. <laughs> yeah, <too>. right? <laughs> so I served it with a wild mushroom risotto and blistered Swiss chard, and it's like my number two seller entree wow. on restaurants. So it's like, it made me really take a step back and listen to people and not cook for me, cook for them. Interesting. Because really, that's why we do it, is to make food for other people. Right. So why am I forcing you to eat what I want to eat? Right. You should eat what you want to eat. You're paying for it. That's right. That's right. That's a good philo good philosophy. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I know personally, just shifting a little bit, um, owning a restaurant is no walk, Ooh, cakewalk. Man. Um, you know, we, we tried it, and I leave it to the professionals it's, to do it's it. It's hard, man. It'll chew you up and spit you out. And it did. It did it's, for me. It's so. rough, man. It's like, and it doesn't always work. Right. I mean, it, it, there's 50 million pieces that all have to fit in at the same time. And people say location, location, location. I don't necessarily agree with that statement, but there's so many moving parts mm -hmm. and timing. Timing is probably the biggest thing. It's right. like, are you in the right area at the right time? And we really got lucky with Wishbone mm -hmm. as to at the beginning of the upswing of the near South Side and, and South Main Village, um, and like, look at the perseverance of people like Sarah Castillo. That's right. She was the first person to sign a lease in that market. Yeah. And was the, almost the last of us to open. To open. But she's kicking tennis. 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 Yeah. Tennis. Yeah. So good. Yeah. Um, if you haven't gone, you need to go eat there. It, the food is fantastic. It um, is. And the, the cocktails are pretty the good too. Atmosphere cocktails are great. Yeah. <laughs> if you like mezcal, go to Tennis. It's great. It's true. Um, it's true. I mean, what she's done in that market with Christian and, and Glenn down there is is awesome. And. The great thing about the near south side is like we're all in each other's restaurants all the time. That's right. Showing support. That's great. And uh, I mean, we joke about the fact that 10 years ago we were all working for other people. Yeah. And now yeah. we all have our own places between Sarah, Glenn, and Christian, and Shannon across the street at Bearded Lady, and then uh, Sarah and Matt at Matt Hotbox, and then us and Coco Shrimp, and you got Funky Picnic, and then uh, a newcomer to Fort Worth, but he, it's like he's lived there forever. Is Tober over? Travis over at Nickel City. Right, it's right, like, he, right. Like he's been part of the crew forever. So it's like we had this great cohesive relationship in that neighborhood to make Fort Worth better culinarily. Right, right. And as we all open second and third concepts, we I mean, look at what Marcus is doing in Mule Alley. Right. And we're all opening things that aren't taking away from other people. We're generating more foot traffic to the neighborhoods we're in. Right, right. And that's what I love about the scene in Fort Worth is we're not, are we competitive? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. But we're competitive for the greater good of the city culinarily. That's awesome. Because we've changed the scene here. I mean, 10 years ago in Fort Worth, it was meat and potatoes. Well, when we were talking about coming back, we looked around and said, there's just not much here yet. Yeah. But you saw it slowly over the last decade just change. It's, where it's there crazy. is a culinary, culinary. People are paying attention to us. People are looking at, you know, writing about our restaurants, writing mm -hmm. about you, other folks too, some that you mentioned. Yeah. Um, just how the food scene has changed here. And for Absolutely. the better. Yeah. Um, it's like, it, and I'm so happy to see Gino back in downtown. Yeah. Yeah. I'm missing those tacos forever. I was like, I love you, man, but I'm not driving to Deep Ellum. <laughs> well, and that's great. You, I mean, you sort of hit, hit on it a little bit. The whole South Main area, the revitalization there yeah. that's happened, um, you know, part of that was government spurred to mm -hmm. help that happen, but all of it's been private industry, too, that have come in to re renovate those buildings um, and make the changes there that, that we need. So Absolutely. you have a place to do a restaurant. and. You know, there's, you know, I mean, I can go on. There's everything. There's a tiki line. There's everything down that street 100%. Now. There's Italian and coming. <laughs> yes, there's, there's Italian coming. Do you want to preview that? Uh, yeah, I mean, we're doing a, a wine dinner on Monday night. That's okay. a, kind of a showcase of what's to come with Trey Mowgli, which means Three Wives. It'll be next door at 401 South Main, um, Main Street entrance. Uh, that's kind of our family-style high-end Italian concept. Okay. That, so there's nothing like that down there. There's, I mean... Uh, Il Moto just opened downtown, but this is right. a little bit different concept. Um, lots of private dining, which there's not any private dining really space down right. in South Main. Right. So we can kind of fill that gap that's needed. Right. Um, uh, and then Parker County Ice House out in Yeah, you Alito's have your hands open. in a lot of yeah, projects right uh, now. Open a pandemic restaurant. It'll be fun. <laughs> yeah. It's all that. It's great. Um, staffing is probably our biggest issue, but that's a whole other demon. So yeah. um, we're just excited to be able and blessed to be able to have the opportunity to do so. Yeah. Well, I want to thank you in a lot of different ways from the community because you do a lot of just charitable work, yeah. um, helping nonprofits in a lot of different ways. Um, you know, I, I tried to bid last week on something, but it went through the roof and it, it got did. too rich for me. It's fun. But, so but that's I appreciate be a fun that. Party. Tell me some of the things that you're doing there. Maybe what's the most memorable thing that you've done? Um, when you've done I mean, that. we have a couple of things that we're really, really proud to be part of. Um, foodie philanthropy, oh, obviously. Thanks. Thank um, you. Thanks. We're super happy to be partnered yeah. with that every year. 
Um, and we've always been hand in hand with Hope Center for Autism, yeah. Susan and Glenwood. Um, yeah. What they do is fantastic. My wife's oldest nephew was autistic, has bridged more into an Asperger's situation now. Mm. Um, so that's close to our heart, and Bree ran Miracle League. She was the director for them that's forever. Right. So yeah. um, special needs kids are really, really close to us. And so, again, it goes back to being a steward of what we do. Sure. Um, if you're not giving back and helping out make other people better, what's the point? And so um, we're very happy and blessed to be able to have the ability to do so. That's and great. So, um, it, it's real hard because I have a hard time saying no. And, <laughs> and as you know, I mean, it's we get into event season and things like that. Everybody, especially now, going coming out of a pandemic, sure. everybody's in such dire needs and straits. We try to do as much as we can, but we just can't do everything. Yeah. And so it, it hurts sometimes, and we pray for everybody, and um, we do what we can, where we can, and when we can. Well, I, I, I for one, but I know a lot of people in the community thank you for that. You know, Susan and Glenn that you mentioned have done Yeoman's work with Hope Center for Autism. Unbelievable stuff um, that they do. Stuff that they just, it's out of their own pocket and yeah. scraping things together. And lots of small nonprofits are like that too, and even big non nonprofits. And you've yeah. done a lot of work to support that. So we'll thank do everything you for that. we can. So absolutely. So we're glad to have you here in Fort yeah. Worth. I'm not going anywhere. We're staying. We're not in Fort letting Worth. you leave again. Yeah. So. But we might branch out a couple cities and do some things, but I'm not, I'm not leaving. So yeah. it's a. Uh, it, I learned my lesson. <laughs> there you go. Well, thanks again. Absolutely. Thank you. Y'all check out Wishbone and Flint uh, and other concepts, Berry Street Ice House. Park and County, Park County Ice, Ice House. Trey Ice Mowgli. House. And there's then, uh, Trey Mowgli, yeah. Yeah, we got lots of stuff coming. So there's, a lot, there's, there's something for everyone. So check it out. Check out his restaurants. Uh, we appreciate you. Thank you very much. Appreciate and then it being get here. out and support your local restaurants and small business mm -hmm. because we, those of us that made it through the pandemic, there's a lot of us that still need help. And so do your do your best to get out and support as much as you can. Great. Please. Good points. Great. Thank you for Absolutely. being here. Appreciate Thank it. Thank you. Thanks for watching this episode, our inaugural episode of Fort Worth Forward. I really, really hope you've enjoyed it as much as I have putting it together for you. I look forward to continuing to bring you more interesting people and their stories as we work to move Fort Worth forward. Thank you.